I'm from the center here um, in the UK where we have, uh, I set it up uh, in April 2013 and we have around 125 staff, academic staff. And we focus really on very narrow area and that's how to measure value, how to measure social impact and we measure it. And it's a very uh, uh, interesting area. And the question is, how do I relate to your work? I'm not a social worker, but I have worked in your area more like a service user. Because on, uh, on weekends, I'm, and I'm a, a, a registered adopter, and on weekends, um, I have a, a holding, a country holding, where I, I deal with children who have been highly sexualized. Um, as you may know, in Britain, I think it may be the same thing in Sweden, social services don't work after about five o'clock on a Friday. <laughs> and that's actually true in Britain. So there's an emergency line, and then there's a child who's been raped or abused. They bring them to emergency foster carers like me. And our job is to keep them alive from Friday, five o'clock, till nine o'clock on a Monday, sometimes a bit longer. And then during the week, you know, I, I have done some other things in my life, but about 10 years ago, I became a carer for a family member, a close family member, who hears voices 24-7. 24-7. So this journey started with me wondering what could I do, having had some experience in private sector, in the public sector, in the NGO third sector, to help your job to make it a lot easier to articulate your value and to help these children and these adults, which you do such a great job. So I guess um, the area that, that I landed on was this question of how to measure social impact. And I say this is Swedish, so is that yes? I think that's a yes, yeah. <laughs> now what does that say? Okay. So, so, it's very difficult, isn't it? Because, you know, the, we all know how to measure financial value, don't we? When I was running companies, you know, a lot of staff, 9,000 staff, you know, I knew what financial value was, but how do you run non, how do you understand, how do you articulate non-financial values? And it occurred to me, we don't have a currency for non-financial values. The currency of financial values is a dollar, but what's the currency of this non-financial values, of intangibles, of social value? How do you articulate love for the children that you take care of, or the homelessness, people who are in the streets, or um, you know, care in the home? How do you articulate that to, to organizations who are looking at you through a monetary lens? Okay, so this is really where this journey started. I think I'm supposed to use this clicker. I guess not. Okay. So, so you know, it occurred to me, as someone who's more like at the other end of your spectrum, you know, for all of the social services, we care, so you don't have to, right? Because, you know, unfortunately, you are at the end of a spectrum when damage has been done. The people who are in your care already often have, are vulnerable, are abandoned, have had great difficulty, and the question, you know, and society doesn't care for them, and that's how they've come and landed in your feet. So, we all know where this sort of thing ends, you know. We've dealt with it, you've dealt with it, I've had you know, close friends who, uh, children who in my care who commit suicide. So we know where these things end. But the question for me was, you know, where does it all start, really? And of course, the problem starts up here. It starts up here. But yet, what we're having to do is take care of it 20 years later, 30 years later, 40 years later. And it's very difficult, isn't it? It's, it's almost, um, I'd say, almost impossible. So the challenge that I set myself 
was how do we measure what's going on here and here, the sentiment we feel and what goes in our head, and how do we translate that into the environment. So this real actions, because I was not seriously really, I was not interested in an academic report, or in fact in any report. What I want is real solutions. So I guess it starts with this. Social services, social workers, you know, you're looking really at the value of the citizen. You're trying to enhance the value of the citizen. You're trying to make them more independent. You're trying to make them more hopeful of life. But there's another problem, because we run under a financial capital society, and they are looking for social return. They have got monetary issues. So the issue being, we pay this money, what is that social return? What is that linkage here? And it is a financial bet on a social outcome. So the work we started doing, so early on, now my Swedish is getting very good. Oh, not so good. Is it this one? Thank you very much. OK, so we started looking and advising governments back from 2011 around the world and about how to translate value. And let me tell you what the issue is. The issue is this. Every government in the world since 2008 ha has a problem that there's not enough money for the community and the services. So as public sector funds recede, they are looking for the private sector to deliver the same services into the community through third sector NGO civil society. It's a blended model. It's very difficult to do. We've tri I've tried five different things, big projects, big projects, social investment bonds. I think you're very interested in this area re recently in Sweden. I can tell you it's very difficult because they have different agendas. We finally landed on one area that has worked for us. I'm so going to go through that with you today. So, in Australia, they translate this as they tax mining companies a lot of money, 22.5% extra, and take that money out of the private sector and they deliver it into the community. In Indonesia, they bring out, brought out the 2% CSR law, 2% of gross profits of public companies. And let me tell you, 2% of gross profits is a lot of money. You know, I, when I was in the private sector, I would have killed my mother for 2% of gross profits. It's a lot of money, I assure you, because it's not net profits. And they take that money and they give it to corporate social responsibility. In India, they did the same last year. 1st of April, 2%. I had CEOs from, the, from Tata Group, Wim, Infosys, Wipro, major Indian corporates fly to the House of Lords for a meeting, an emergency meeting, because they were being taxed, they are now taxed 2% of their profits. So every government, as you can see, has got the same challenge and they're bringing out the same principles. And in the Islamic countries, we bring in laws around 2, 2.5% two called the Zakat law, it's the Islamic law, Islamic rule, to translate the same. I'm here because, uh, uh, um, Gosh, I apologize, forgot your, oh, I forgot your name, thank you. He, he saw me speak at the Vatican last year, or on a video, on, uh, on YouTube, I think, or something. And the Vatican is a very wealthy organization. A lot of money goes to the Vatican. But they want to deliver social impact. That's their job. Their job isn't to run a bank, their job is to to bring good social value to the world. So they have these issues as well. And in Italy, they both brought up personal taxation laws to bring money into the community. In Europe, you know, I head up a couple of EU uh, uh, services in, in social value and transparency in, in, in modern slavery and things like this. And we brought out rules and regulations of companies over 500 must adhere to in their corporate social responsibility. 
Now, in the UK, we translated it a little differently. So in the UK, but they're all, different. they're all the same, more or less. In the UK, we brought out a law called the Social Value Act. And that says that any procurement in the public sector has to deliver social value. Around 20%. Do you know what that means? That means if I want to build a bridge across this town that costs maybe 500 million euro, I'm sorry, or whatever currency, I've got to deliver around 100 million of social value. Otherwise, I will not get the contract. This is big money. Our biggest we've done is 1.5 billion, 300 million of social value. So the first one I did was 385 million pounds sterling, and we had to deliver 87 million. We didn't. We achieved 54 million of real value. And I'm not talking about value in a report. I'm talking about things in the field. Things that the, the, the government cannot do, libraries, art centers, mental health units, parks, leisure centers, arts. These are real outcomes. And so we basically take, and I'm not talking about 20% uh, of cash value, because no company has that. It's actually output. Because what you have to understand is that this concept of giving started around 100 years ago. If we go, it started with good old-fashioned philanthropy. Guys like me make a lot of money, and then we go, I'll give it to you a little bit. And you should be goddamn grateful as well, because it's philanthropy. About 20 years ago, it progressed to corporate social responsibility, which is transactional. Corporate social CSR is I don't really care about you, here's a check, and you give me your logo from your charity, and I'll put it up on my site. And next year, it'll be cats, and next year, it'll be dogs, and next year, it'll be trees. It's not really, it's a transaction. Then it became sustainability. The banks went, it doesn't matter, we're unethical, but look, our buildings are made of green bricks. So it was a sustainability gig. Because social innovation has, any, has a trend like any other trend. Now, currently, it's social impact. Why is it social impact? Because we have no money, real problems in society. I don't care if my plastic shoes are in a landfill that will take a thousand years to deteriorate. I am starving now. I have no money now. I have you know, I have government taking away my disability money. I have, uh, uh, you know, all kinds of taxes. I cannot feed my children. I cannot let them go to school. These are social impact. It's the impact received, not the output given. And then finally, the new paradigm is called citizenship. Citizenship is a multi-stakeholder framework. What it basically says is that we're all in it together. We're all parts of, a, of society. And large companies have now moved to that. Microsoft no longer has CSR. It's called citizenship department. Barclays, citizenship. Even Imperial Tobacco is called citizenship. Because they understand it's a new articulation. And social innovation is an industry like any industry, and so it keeps moving. Five, ten years, will be something else. So, let's, let's, let's not keep going into this. Let's, let's talk now back to what we're here for. OK, but really, the issue is this. What is it in our thoughts that forms a good mind, a good thought, which forms a good citizen, a good family, a good organization, or a good community, a good organization, a good region, a good country, and a good globe? And what is that connection? Because you are at the end of it now. So we need to understand what we do in society that changes the mind, and what we, what we do in the mind that changes our behavior in society. So we have less resource requirements from social services because the pressure is on budgets. Thank you, thank God. Okay, so that's the model we built. So we then went further. So it's that mechanism of how it meshes. We wanted to find out the, first of all, academic linkages between these dynamic models. 
But we started with this problem. We said, OK, so let's measure, first of all, one section, organizational value. Well, there's 165 million companies in the EU, 35 in the US, million, 40 million in China. There's about a billion organizations in the world. Now, normally when you measure social value, it's a process of like a survey. You come there with a board and you go, do you love trees? Do you love animals? Do you love little multicolored children? Do you have pictures that show that you love them? That process is usually three months to 18 months. And the price that consultants will charge you, if you're KPMG, they will charge you around 100 to 200,000 euros. If you're a one-man consultant, you'll charge about 5,000 euros. Obviously, that is unsuitable, isn't it? The challenge is too big for that kind of approach. So we knew we had to come up with something quite radical. What we needed was a Model T Ford, you know? The Model T Ford was the first car that was built by Ford, Henry Ford, that was fast, reliable, replicable, and cheap. It was for everyone to use. And so we went out to set out to build that. We did a lot of studies. We have our own journal. Raisa, who's in the audience, is the editor of that journal, Social Value and Intangibles. We put a lot of conferences together. We published a lot, a lot of, a lot of academic material. This was the least, most recent one in Prague. And we give a lot of speeches to the Vatican, to the House of Lords, to Hindu jars, billionaires, Lakshmi Mittal, etc. And so we came up, in the end, with a metric which we call the social earnings ratio. Why? Because the one number index of financial value is something called the price earnings ratio. When those of you who've run listed companies, quoted companies, will know it's called the PE ratio. It's one number. And we knew to deliver social currency, the social value, we had to come up with a one number index because the public don't understand lots of KPIs. T total value is financial value plus social value. It's all than one value. So this was the amazing thing that happened. That's my mother ringing, I think. <laughs> so this was the amazing thing that happened. We now measure social value in 10 seconds. Now, that's amazing, isn't it? 10 seconds. And it's not 200,000 euros. It costs us actually about $5, not even pounds. So that meant we could start to measure very fast. So when it came to procurement, for example, you know, I talked about companies bidding for contracts. You have usually, it's a European process, it's called PQQITT, Pre-Qualified pre Questionnaire Invitation to Tender. For a one billion pound contract, one billion euro contract, you've got 10 days to make the decision. You've got 20 bidders. How can you measure using normal techniques? You've got to be able to do it very fast. And so we applied it to that, and now we are the biggest provider. We spun out a company from a university this year, and we're the biggest provider in Britain. We manage, in Britain, over three billion pounds of public procurement now, in nine months. I think we just acquired this today, another 500 million, so that would be a bit more than three billion, and I'm expecting one next week at 6.5 billion. So it's rising very fast. And we make decisions on procurement from the public sector so that they can take that value and deliver it to your kind of services, to the social services in the community. And that is about the only thing I have done in this sector that has actually worked. So <laughs> we were very lucky. In the Vatican, they called it the God metric. <laughs> I could not have paid them to do that. It was and we, this year, we have measured, by the end of this year, we've measured around $4 trillion worth of organizations. So we can benchmark now. We can benchmark values of different processes and people. We can even benchmark my value to a company's value. And that has actually transformed the way we work. 
Because now we started last month to do personal value in 60 seconds. And we launched it with celebrities like Will I Am, etc. He goes, My PV is 6.2. What's your PV? Okay? Because we all have value, don't we? Right? So if I say, What's your value? You go, I have a house, two cars, etc. You go, Yeah, that's your financial value. What's your value of your relationships, of your networks, of, the, of what you do in the voluntary sector, of how you help people? What is your value to society? And let's measure that in 60 seconds. And let's then see how that compares to the value we actually bring to society. So what we do is we convert, convert sentiment to financial value. And people say, and if you're interested, I can show you how we do it. It's, I'll have to kill you all, of course, because it's secret. <laughs> but, but no, it's actually we made it open source, because this was not about us making money. We have to make money because we're doing a lot of research in a lot of areas, right? And often we do it for free. We're doing one right now on a 225 million pound contract, NHS, delivering value to integrated social health, so, uh, health and social care. People in the home, complex. So we measure re-enablement, an intangible. So often when, when we do our work, we go, we start the projects, don't we? We go, we're going to remember, uh, we do independent living. That's what we're going to measure. That's what we want, or re-enablement. We want them to be independent people so they are healthy, they don't require our services. But what do we actually measure? We measure how many times we clean their bottom. We go and measure how many times we come there to make sure they haven't killed themselves. We, measure, we don't measure what we went out to measure. We measure what we do. So the difference has happened is that we can now measure sentiment. We can actually measure re-enablement. We can actually measure hope. We can actually measure love. It's challenging, isn't it? And from that, we work out the financials of how much re-enabled people we've created, how, how much better that person is so he doesn't rely on our services. So let me show you if I show you some of our commissions right now. We started this organization on the 5th of January this year, since Lars contacted us in October, November last year. Let me tell you, this organization, which is, feeds the money into the not-for-profit organization, now has, in nine months, 50 staff, and it's got around 30 million pounds of revenue. Five staff a week are joining because people are looking to measure the value. Not personal value, of projects, of services, of outputs, the impact we have. So these are some of our commissions here. Animal welfare, modern slavery. There's a law we brought out in the UK called modern slavery. Of course, we, there is two sides to slavery. There's above the line, above the iceberg, which is uh, trafficking women, children, domestic slavery, agricultural slavery. And then there's underneath the line, it's a much bigger issue. Transparency in the procurement chain. So when I buy this, is it made in China by people who have been enslaved? Or in Africa? Or your mobile phone, as you know, iPhone has got a problem about this stuff being made in Apple. In the UK, it is now illegal. We brought out a law last year, no, this year, royal assent by the Queen in March, that says that any any product, any service that comes through uh, enslaved conditions anywhere in the world, it works like a bribery act. The person, the director of the company goes to prison. Now, if you look at a large retailer, they may have 30,000 suppliers. You can't go and do a survey, can you? So you need to do it through software. You need to assess whether this has been done under enslaved conditions, and that's what we do. So I won't uh, uh, bore you to too much tears now. So effectively, I've logged in already because it saves you time. So this is live data. If you'd come in a few minutes ago, you would have seen me actually log in. 
So this is live data. It's a, this is a quick demo because we don't share confidential information. But this is actually a bank, one of the biggest in the world. And we can measure the social value without even talking to them. It's different. It used to be, when we started this work in 2012, this, this kind of work, we used to go to large companies and say, can you please give us 35,000 pounds for us to spend six months of your time, waste you, waste your time to measure your social value? And they would say, so Aliga, let me understand this. You want me to pay you money to make me look like an idiot. Is that what you want to do? And I go, yes, basically, yes. And they went, no, thank you. Now we measure their value first, and we go to them and say, we have measured your value, and it's very poor. Now, would you like to do something about it? Because we're, we're going to publish it in the benchmark. And it's completely turned the tail. So people wonder, how do I get very, very super rich people to come to one-day conferences at Dorchester from 9 a.m. to 11 at night? It's because, it's not because suddenly they have a Damascus experience and they found love. <laughs> it's because they need, in this world, to articulate their value. It used to be, in, you know, when, <laughs> I'm of a, such an old generation, I remember Bhopal Union Carbide. You know, they destroyed Bhopal. No one gave a damn. Two days of news. Now, a CEO of a company, big company, coughs in the wrong place, says the wrong thing, suppliers walk away, customers go, I don't like this. You're, you're making my clothes in India, in a factory that's caught fire and killed people. Governments tax you first. So they now know that social value drives financial value. Okay. So this is typically, you know, we will report to them their financial value, their share price, next to their social value every 10 seconds. It's amazing how you can get attention of people. Okay. And because you can measure it. And in business, if you can't measure it, you can't bill it. All right? Simple as that. If you can't measure it, then it doesn't exist. In fact, that's a scientific concept. Okay? That whole idea that if something fall, drops in the woods, does it make a sound? If you're not there to hear it, no, it doesn't. All right? Okay, and then you, you uh, baffle them with lots of numbers and pie charts, and we demonstrate their value in different regions that they operate in, and so on. And, you know, the usual stuff. I guess what's more important in the public sector is how we do it in a, we do it in a, a procurement. So we will tell in the procurement, for example, in this one, let me, let me because time is, time is short, let me show you this particular tender. Very small. This is the smallest tender we did. And I want you to focus on this. In public sector procurement, you have a system where you might look at price, 45%, for example, 40%. Maybe quality, speed of service. You have it in your service. If people want to bid into your contracts to deliver, they do the same. And the difference between winning and losing is usually 1%. So in this case, the cut number D and E, the difference was 3%, 2%. But the social value component was 10%. And even for 180,000 pounds, they took us to court because it matters. Now, can you imagine what would happen if you got it wrong when you're measuring 1.5 billion? They will take you to court. So that's why it needed an academic rigor. And I have to say, you know, I, I am a, a, um, a new academic, and uh, academia is very pedestrian, but what it does have is it's agnostic. It's non-partisan, and you have credibility. So it actually matters now. Social value drives financial value. And if they don't deliver that value in the next five years, or whatever the project is, even if it's construction, they will lose the contract. It will be terminated. And we monitor them every month through a load of statistics, which uh, uh, I won't bore you, but you, you get the picture. OK. so. 
let's just uh, try and wrap up now for you. So let, let's look at, you know, um, so that's the kind of procurement is what makes money for us um, to drive the research. Um, the uh, things like, um, he's made me nervous now. He's, <laughs> he, things, uh, things like uh, modern slavery, that is a lot of companies, right? So that will drive value. Personal value, I, we're doing one million people for free starting next month now. We started the project last, last month we launched it, next month is uh, when it goes public. But these are some of the other th areas I thought you'd be interested in. So I talked about re-enablement already, that's a 225 million pound contract. Of course, our fees are not that, we charge 1%. Ambition, Arts Council, What's, they want to bring out arts to change society. So they put one million pounds into an area where they have 20% disability, high unemployment, people don't apply for jobs. When they lower the salary, people apply for the same jobs. They say, why didn't you apply for the jobs before? They say, I wasn't good enough. I don't think I'm good enough. Because when ambition is gone, it's very hard, right? So they want to measure ambition. And that's what we did, and we showed them how it could drive that financial value. Spirituality, prison service, chaplaincy. The prison service is going, what is the value of the chaplaincy we do? What is that value? We, we're making them more spiritual. What? What does it mean? What does it mean? Does it make more, what does it help them in society? Are they not going to re-offend? So we measure spirituality. When they put a big network rail, like a, a, a trail, rail track, we've got a big one in Britain called HS2, billions. What is the value of what impact on society, on the, on the communities around it, the destruction of homes, and what jobs are created, et cetera, et cetera. And how does that change? And so on, sexual health, et cetera. So these are real things, and of course there are negative issues as well. So when you look at things like, uh, well, I've talked about supply chains already, but for example, you know, when the fire service, fire services, they spend 10% of their budget on putting out fires. 45% of their budget on training to put out fires, and 45% of their budget is talking to people to tell them not to put fires out, okay? To put fires out. So when the government cuts budgets, of course they go, oh, this talking rubbish, what the hell is this outreach? Just cut that out. Just, talk, just take it out. Because you are paid to put out fires. So don't give me all this nonsense. And so there's a value, isn't there, in that? So we measure that value because in the end what they're trying to do is do what you have to do get in the mind of that young kid who gets up in the morning and goes i am so unhappy with my life i'm going to go out there and set fire to that building that's the problem they have it's not putting out fire is it the problem they have is how to change society which is what all our problems are okay and then we work in things like people in isolation, especially women in isolation. And what is the, there was a great report I came to two days ago, Gabriella from Poland, fantastic, about the cost of not having intervention. I see you were there. It was a very uh, awe-inspiring report. But we have to translate it into financial value. Why? Because unfortunately, the world basis on that value, all right? Decisions are made on that. It does not matter how many times in the social service you go, look, look, we've helped these people. If we hadn't, they go, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, very good, yeah, yeah, it's four million pounds, so four million dollars, we have to save it, sorry. Yeah, but if I don't do this, it'll cost more money. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, so you need to try articulate in the value of the people you're trying to persuade. Okay, so things like uh, prostitution, et cetera, et cetera, of course. So it's all about positive interventions we're trying to do. So I'm just going to try and end it now, three minutes, and then I'll stop it. Um, we, now look at, we now have developed lots of other metrics, health and, we, health and well-being metric. All kinds of metrics are coming. People are constantly saying, can you measure this? Can you measure hope? Can you measure leadership? Can you measure? And can you translate it into what it means financially? So this has become a new sector, you know, a complete new sector. And I said that we're going to measure one, mil one million people's personal value. 
And it doesn't matter if you're poor, you have value. So this guy was homeless begging in the street two weeks ago when we were filming at the world, we are the partner to the world, the world, round the world yacht race. Billionaires and millionaires. And just across, these people begging. And these people having champagne. Now, interesting. So I said, send the TV crew. We had TV crew. I said, send it there. Measure his value. And he has a story. So it's not about what that value is. It's not what that number is. It's about how you progress in that. How you change yourself. How you measure yourself. And this one was the other end of the spectrum. He is the guy who owns the Round World Yacht Race. Very wealthy, Sir Robin. And I'll tell you something very interesting. He came to me and he went, I have just heard this nonsense about measuring your value in 60 seconds. What nonsense? He's a really lovely guy. And I went, Sir Robin, why didn't you go and measure it? 60 seconds of your life, what's the big deal, man? And he went, and he measured it, 60 seconds. And you know what his first reaction was? Is that score better than his? That was interesting. And that, you can see he's cheating. He's trying to cheat his score there, right? He's added a little fun. Okay. Because we want to progress. We want to be able to measure what we're doing in society and progress it. And we want to see and compare. So um, it's actually worth, you know, so, so we've, we're now in a growing phase. We're not sure why we're growing so fast. It's all for not-for-profit. It's good. And we, you know, we're grateful for all these commissions we're getting. That's me, and I'm just going to end now. I won't play the whole video. Well, it's five minutes. I think you might cover it. So it's just interesting. We put together a small, oh, sorry, all boring stuff. I was going to show you how we do all this, but I don't think you want to know this. So um, if I can find it. Uh, oh, yeah. No, no. OK. So I'll just play this little video because we're preparing smaller, this is too long, a small two and a half minute clip for a personal video. But it just gives us a bit of a sentiment and then we finish. But thank you very much, I won't speak to you again. We've all got to give something back to the society. We are nothing without everybody else. Personal values mean to me love, respect, respecting your other people, people respecting me. Now I've become a father, my firstborn is only about two and a half months old or so, and um, being around him, providing for him, it's really centred me. And uh, I'm, everything I do now is for him. It's, uh, it's about your standards, it's about how you choose to live, uh, decisions you make, how you treat people. It's just like simple thing, if you give to someone, it just comes around as a circle, so it makes the community stronger. Yeah, like someone someone does a good deed to you, then you've got to give back to yeah. others. If you see it up in their knee, that's what you're going to ask, so you should definitely try and help them. I'm doing things to make it a better place, and I think, you know, I, I would especially like to appeal to, to the younger people, because they're the ones who can change it. You know, old guys like me, we're too old to change. <laughs> but you guys, you young people, you can change it. You can make it better. Being tested for your personal value does make you think a lot about what you're really about, what you're trying to do in your life, and how best you can improve life for others. Of course it does. I think to me is is about perspective I think it's an individual thing and it's about what you think makes you you and what you're proud of that you do and that you are that makes you yourself and that is personal to you but also that you can share with other people It's 
um, it's made me reflect on a number of areas of my life and you, you ask the question, could I be doing more or should I be doing more in this? I've had 38 years in the public sector, should I be contributing more and putting more back? Uh, detail. I just like shaping things up and making it look nice. Um, obviously I've got a lot of residents and clients to look after, mm -hmm. but um, it all goes well. And my family. Mm -hmm. I love my family. Helping others, trying to influence everyone in a positive way. Yeah, looking after family and making sure like my sister's okay and stuff like that. I think living my life is important and really enjoying every like part of it, every moment of it, and not regretting things. Listen to the muscles, child. Listen to the don'ts. Listen to the shouldn'ts, the impossibles, the won'ts. Listen to the don't haves and listen close to me. Anything is possible. Everything can be. We've all got to give something back to the society. We are nothing without everybody else. Being responsible to your own family, looking after the family, and making sure that they are well looked after. It compels me to give to others. I like, I enjoy like the service industry. I've been a chef for 23 years, and I give. I like to think I put a little bit of myself in my food, a little bit of love. A lot of love goes in my food. That's why it tastes so damn good. Spreading good vibes, um, uh, being positive and uh, kind to this person. And, uh, obviously, the reason why you do that is because. Um, you want people to be happy as well, you know, you want to spread that love around. Oh, well, I would encourage other people to measure their PV because I think there's a balance in this world around what we take and what we contribute and it makes you ask that question. It also makes you think differently and I think that's always good to challenge your own ideas. Others should measure their personal value so that they can know more about where they are in the world and how better to affect their position and the position of others. My personal value is 20.9. Why don't you go and measure yours and help us push this all forward? Thank you very much.